I've believed in Sasquatch since I was a child. Once into it, it kind of grabs you. You were obsessed with it. I was that. obsessed. Extraterrestrial, something dimensional. What does your gut tell you? I have three now stories of people who say that they were healed by a Sasquatch. Wow. Something grabbed my bed and shook it, and I yelled, and I had something pushing on the outside of the tent. If I'd had more guts, I would have put pushed my back. hand and pushed back, but I, I was too afraid. Are you convinced beyond a shadow of a doubt that something's going on? 100%. There? Well, thanks for joining us on Beyond Belief, and we've got one of those cliffhanger shows for you tonight. Jim Myers is with us, an avid outdoorsman, enjoys hunting, fishing, hiking, and camping, and all those great things that go with that. But for the past eight years, why don't we add to that list a Sasquatch researcher and museum curator? Jim, welcome to the program. Thank you, George. How did you get involved in Sasquatch research? <laughs> That's a, it's quite a story, actually. I've, I've believed in Sasquatch since I was a child. Yeah. Uh, ever since the movie The Legend of Boggy Creek was made in okay. the 70s. But it's only since we moved to Colorado in about 2009, two things happened that were key. Um, I own a store, and as I was renovating the store, I met my first Bigfoot eyewitness, and she was a local to Bailey, very credible person, mm -hmm. and I took her to coffee. We talked about her experience. She convinced me, and then the show Finding Bigfoot from Animal Planet came and did an episode right. in Bailey, and I went to that showing and, and talked to the actors, and, and that kind of launched me into this uh, kind of unexpectedly on my side, but once once into it, it kind of grabs you and I couldn't get You're away. You were obsessed with it. I was that. obsessed. Have you ever seen a Bigfoot yourself? I have seen a Bigfoot one time visually. Tell uh, us that story. There's a lake that's a very popular tourist destination about 13 miles from Bailey. It's called Wellington Lake. Big with campers, hikers, and uh, because it's a hot spot for Bigfoot sightings and vocalizations, we were camping mm -hmm. there, went out early in the morning to go do some fishing. Everyone else in the campsite was asleep as far as I knew. There's a mountain, a rock mountain at one end of the lake called uh, the castle. And the rocks kind of come around the sides of the lake a little ways. And I was fishing, I fly fish, I had just cast, and I was just looking around and I looked up to my right and there's a big rock outcropping, maybe 200 yards away, and there was something standing up there looking down. I could tell it was very large. It was uniform in color. And of course, right at that moment, as fate would have it, a fish pulled on my line. So I turned to look at the fish, and I looked back, and it was gone. Gone that quickly. That quickly. What did it, uh, did it seem human? It did not, see, it, it wasn't a human. I could tell that, but it was, it was, human-like, and that was standing on two legs, looking down from the rock. Um, I didn't get the sense it was looking at me. It was just looking downwards towards the lake. And uh, maybe it saw me, and that's why it disappeared. I don't know. But uh, I learned a lesson. Never take your eyes off of a Sasquatch so if you see quick. one. that quick. Yeah. I had a caller on my radio show, Coast to Coast AM, several years ago. And the person was fishing on the side mm -hmm. of a creek much like you were, and he caught two trout. Mm -hmm. And he's holding up these two trout. He looks up, and there's a Bigfoot <laughs> looking at him 10 feet away. Wow. Staring at him and the trout. Now, this guy's scared to death. Of course. He hands the trout to the Bigfoot, both of them. Bigfoot takes them, looks at the guy, Gives him one back. <laughs> That's quite an experience. Now, if that was a true story, that tells you that they have some kind of thought process, doesn't it? Uh, I'd believe they do, yes. I would say their intelligence rivals ours or even surpasses ours in some areas. How many people are seeing or citing these Bigfoot stories? It's hard to say, George. I would 
The best estimate that, that I could give based on a number of different databases that are out there is 50 to 60,000 sightings just in this country. Wow. Well, there have been so many encounters yes. that you created the Sasquatch Encounter Museum yes. in Bailey, Colorado. Correct. Let's look. So we're about to enter the inner sanctum of the Sasquatch Outpost, which is the Sasquatch Encounter Discovery Museum. So if you come with me, we'll head on in. This is a, a loop of recordings from around the country of Sasquatch vocalizations, different types. As you can hear them laughing, talking, howling, whooping. I just wanted to give people some idea of what does a Sasquatch sound like. And as you can hear, they actually talk. They have their own language. This is something that we found back in about 2013. I found a set of elk tracks where the elk was actually running and it was defecating as it ran, which I thought was unusual. I followed the, the tracks till I came upon this imprint of an elk's body in the snow. Like an elk stamp, it's like it, it was running and it hit the snow and stopped dead. And I could see the legs, I could see the neck, the head. This elk did not move once it hit the snow. Then we noticed another set of tracks coming from a different direction that were 10 to 12 feet apart with every stride and the two sets of tracks converged right here where this elk was in the snow. And then the big tracks just carried on. And our assumption is this elk was somehow knocked down by a Sasquatch, which then picked it up and carried it off, which is probably four or 500 pounds dead weight. Given that there were no elk tracks leaving this location, the only explanation we could come up with is that it was picked up and carried off. The easiest way to know if Sasquatch is active in an area is looking for what they do with trees. And tree breaks is the most common one that we find, where trees are broken and left hanging always the same way. Or tree arches, which are trees that are bent over and then stuck in the ground or stuck under another tree to keep this arch shape and sometimes I've seen these up to 15 feet high coming down and then stuck in the ground maybe a foot to keep that tree bent. These are classic signs and I find them everywhere I go in Colorado. So I have a few examples of what we're talking about when it comes to tree breaks. This, this is a classic one where it's twisted and, and bent. This one is unusual. We, we found this uh, near the Wigwam Trail and this tree was green when it was found and it had been twisted off like a bottle cap. The, the amount of strength they would take in the grip of a hand to twist this off and then just drop it is unbelievable. This is a map that we've had since we started the museum and every pin on here is a story and every story was told to myself or my wife the red ones are actual visual sightings of a Sasquatch. The yellow ones have to do with some kind of a tree structure like we spoke about. Black are footprints. Green is some kind of a vocalization. And blue is an object that was thrown at someone while they were out hiking. So this is the whole state. This is Bailey right here, but there were so many sightings in Bailey I had to blow it up and create a second map just of the activity around here. So you can see, I think there's over 300 pins on the map. And again, this is just people who have talked to me about their sightings. So imagine how many other people have seen a Sasquatch in Colorado. Sounds like a, an exciting museum. <laughs> well, I hope so. And it's only an hour away from where we're taping right now. Correct. That's fantastic. Why do you think there's so many sightings in the Bailey, Colorado area? You know, I'm not convinced that there's more sightings in Bailey than anywhere else. I think the fact that our store and museum are in Bailey draws people who've seen them to come and tell their story. 
But I'm convinced if my store was based anywhere in the Rockies, there would be that many sightings around it. There it's would. just, there's that many. I mean, how many little dot buttons did you have up there? Uh, around 300. That's a lot. It is. For a geographical area. Yeah. That is and they're not, they're not all around Bailey. It's the whole state of Colorado. But those are people who have come, to my knowledge, we're the only people that have ever told their story to. Are the sightings seasonal? Well, in the winter, people aren't in the woods as much. And so we typically get far more in spring, summer, and fall, but they're still active in the winter. We've found tracks. Uh -huh. We found other signs that they're out there moving around, but there's just not people to see them. Looking at the illustrations, and we've seen many over the years, the creature looks like it could be an ape, but it's more upright, more human looking. Do you think it's like that missing bridge, that link? I've been asked that before, and people have asked me, is, is Sasquatch a descendant of Gigantopithecus, which was a, an extinct great ape? Personally, I don't think so. And the reason I don't think so is there's no fossil record of Sasquatch, for one. But the other thing is that they are so human-like. They're, they're bipedal, their intelligence level. They reason. They reason. They have a language that's very similar to our language. I don't think an extinct ape had that. And so they're far more human than not, is why I believe that they're not an extinct, uh, a relative of an extinct great ape. There have been some DNA studies on hair samples and things like that, and they do sh show strange anomalies here, don't they? They do, and it actually shows that Sasquatch is probably a human hybrid, that they are part human and part unknown. Right. The unknown means in, in the genome database, it doesn't appear. It's not I there. have heard, Jim, that it's a Earth-based creature, mm -hmm. like you just said, extraterrestrial, something dimensional. The, these theories come out from mm -hmm. all over the place. What does your gut tell you? If you had asked me that 10 years ago, I would have said they're only a flesh and blood creature of some kind. But I've had so many experiences and know personally so many people who've had experiences such as a Sasquatch disappearing in front of their eyes, literally disappearing, or seeing something cloaked in the woods where you can see it, right. but it's not there, that uh, I am convinced that they do not exist only in this dimension. They go somewhere else. I couldn't tell you where that is, but... Uh, I, I don't think they're only physical. I think there's more to them than purely what we can see.